uh, Lee Thomas. And I used to wonder, thank you. I used to wonder what people saw when they looked at me. Would they not shake my hand? Would they walk away? Would they look at me funny? How would they react to these pictures? How would they react to me? And then I would think about it in my mind and worry about being ostracized or, or not being accepted. And then one day I realized what they were looking at when they looked at me. They were looking at a community leader. They were looking at an upstanding citizen. They were looking at a man of integrity and honor. They were looking at someone who stood for honesty and good things, who loved his community and loved his city. They were looking at someone who loved his job and loved his family. Because no matter what anybody saw when they were looking at me on the outside, I knew that they were simply just looking at me. And it was, thank you, thank you. Uh, my message is simple. Uh, you, never, uh, you never know where you're going to find your success. You never know where your success is going to come from. But if you stay positive, with integrity, with honesty, it will come. It will definitely come. You look at the rapper and you don't think, and I mean rapper meaning the outside of someone, <laughs> not yo, 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 how you feel, <laughs> but the outside of someone. You look at the rapper and you think that this wouldn't be the face of a broadcast journalist, a person who goes on TV every day in front of a few hundred thousand people, and yet it is. You look at the, the pictures that they put up around the country of our city of Metro Detroit, and no matter where they're talking about, they seem to find the blighted picture of downtown Detroit, and they have no idea of how creative and special and innovative this city is and the people of this city are. So I say to you, forget the book and the judging of the book and the cover. It's really about the content of the character, not only of myself, because I look at myself as very parallel to this city. People look at me funny. Sometimes they're not sure if they should talk to me. Sometimes they're not sure if they should shake my hand. But once they study the content of the man, they realize that there's a lot more to Lee Thomas than this, just this multicolored outside. So my, my story and my message here is remain positive, remain positive, even through difficult times. The biggest, one of the biggest companies in the world for a long period of time, we all know, is General Motors. It's embarrassing to go into bankruptcy. It's very embarrassing to go into bankruptcy. But much like GM and a lot of the other companies that struggled in this area, we're still here. We're still working hard. I say get up every day, go to work with honesty and integrity and have a positive attitude and that positive attitude will serve you well. But it's not easy. You'll go through some difficult times. And I'll share one of my most difficult with you. I was in a group of kids and um, a little girl backed into me. She wasn't watching what she was doing, she was playing. She backed into me, she turned around and looked up and screamed. Um, she screamed all the parents in the room, anyone who knows a kid, that scream where every adult in the room starts going to that child to see what's wrong. You know, that real scream when you know something's wrong, you turn around to help the child. So she's looking at me, she screams, and I reach down to help her, and she screams louder. And it was that point that I realized that I scare small children. It's true. I mean, wrap your mind around that for, for a second. I mean, I simply scare small children. It was difficult for me to deal with that fact, so uh, at that point I, I went home and I, and I didn't go outside for two weeks and three days. I would put on my makeup, I would go to work, I would come home, I would, I would do everything I had to do before I had to go home, and then I'd go home and then take off my makeup and stay home from that point out, because kids have no malicious bones in their body. Kids are pure honesty, pure love. That girl had no ill intent towards me. She was genuinely scared, and I didn't want to scare small kids. So I had to wrap my mind around it and go, you know, I'm a positive person. I live off of positivity, and I'm locking myself in the house. I, I, I couldn't take it. I'm looking at my gym shoes over in the corner because, of course, I don't put them away. Back when in my single days, they were just over there in the corner. <laughs> Where they belong, in my opinion. And I, I say to myself, yeah, that was a little bit of me coming out right there, you know. <laughs> I say to myself, I just want to go play ball, you know. I just want to go play. 
So I decide after two weeks and three days and watching as many Oprah episodes as I could stand, I, I'm going to go back outside. So I, uh, I get my shoes and I go play ball. I go to the gym because the guys at the gym saw me change. This disease is a pigment disorder. It takes your, takes your color, but it's not contagious. It's not life-threatening, and it's progressive. So it started with a spot, and it progressed to what you see today. So all the guys at the gym had seen me before. You know, If they don't want to touch me, I'll just shoot a jumper in their face. Hello. <laughs> I think you better guard me. Either way, I'm going to win. So the guys at the gym were used to this. So I went to the gym, and it was cool. And then I would go to the places I'd been before, and it was cool. So I'd go to the same grocery store all the time. It was cool. And uh, I'm at the grocery store, and I'm down on the bottom shelf in, uh, in a holiday market. You know what I'm talking about, where the, where the rice cakes are. I love those little ranch-flavored ones. They're so tasty, <laughs> so tasty. And I'm getting the rice cakes, and I'm, I'm leaned over because they were far in the, the back of the shelf, and I hear a voice say, you got a boo-boo? And I knew it was another little girl. So I froze. I did not know what to do, you know? Is she going to scream if I look up? So I go, all right, time to man up. It's a three-year-old, and I have to man up, but I do. <laughs> I, I stand up. And I say, uh, no, I don't have a boo-boo. I have a disease called vitiligo. About 1% of the world population has it. About 60 million people. It's not life-threatening. It's not contagious. Then I go, I'm talking to a three-year-old. I go, no, cutie, I'm fine. She says, it's not boo-boo. I said, I said no, I, I've been down to her. I say, it's fine. And she reaches out, and she touches my face, and she says, does it hurt? <laughs> and I said, I said, what did she say, Mom? Because I didn't really get the middle part. She said, she wants to know if it hurts. And she says, does it hurt? And I said, no, cutie, it doesn't hurt at all. And she turned around, and she explored the bread aisle with the fascinations that Wonder Bread has, <laughs> totally forgetting about me. And I realized with those two little girls, with those few months apart, that that was the duality of what I had to deal with in my situation. Uh, one little girl thought she knew what it was. She thought it was a boo-boo. And because of that, she treated me with compassion. She treated me with love, which is what I want. The other little girl had absolutely no idea what it was, so she screamed in fear. Not, it was just ignorance, not malicious ignorance. She just did not know. And that's what set me out on my mission to say, OK, I need to let people know what this is. I need people to understand this. In my linear vision, I would go out, and if someone asked me about it, I would tell them. Now, I say remain positive because that little girl, with one touch of her hand, gave me my life back, gave me my positivity back, gave me my ability to go out and conquer the world again back. Uh, I worked hard to get my job, you know, put myself through college, and I wasn't ready to give it up for any disease that I had no control over. So I say remain positive because she gave me my positivity back. So I go back to work, and I'm like, you know what? I'll just put makeup on my face, because I know it can be distracting for some people. And I'll leave my hands open. If you see it, you just see it. You understand it. You see it in my scalp. I do have a disease. I'm not hiding it, but I'm covering it enough to make people comfortable, because I know it can be uncomfortable. Um, and one day, I get a phone call from a young man. He says to me, um, he has vitiligo. I talk to him for a little while, because people that have the disease know what it is, and they give me a call. He, he says to me, after talking to him about 45 minutes, very cool young man, head on straight, 15 years old, knew what college he wanted to go to, straight A student, karate was his thing. I enjoyed talking to him. And about 45 minutes in, he says, will you show people what you look like on TV without makeup? And naturally, I say, why? Because my boss had been asking me to do it for a year and a half, and I was telling her, well, you don't tell your boss no, of course. I gave her the, let me think about it, which really meant no. You know, but you can't tell your boss no. I went, let, let me think about it. For a year and a half, I'm like, let me think about it. So when the kid asked me, I said, why? And he said a phrase that has changed my life and probably brought me to this podium today and all the other podiums around the country when I speak. And he said to me, if you show people what you look like, then maybe they will treat me differently. And a lot of times, we walk around with blinders on, not really thinking about anyone else's plight. You have your own struggle. We each have our own struggle. You can see mine, but you have yours. You know what it is. You have that thing that, thinks, that you think makes you so different that you just can't tell anybody. You can only share it with your loved ones or maybe nobody. We all have that thing. You can just see mine. But we have that thing that makes us have those blinders on and say, I'm going to do what I got to do 
to make my life successful and my loved ones successful without really looking past that. But that kid took the blinders off for me. And when he said, you know, people could treat him differently, I said, of course. Of course I'll take off my makeup and show what it looks like. I did this story back in 2005, which you saw a little bit of there. And ever since then, everything has opened up. I interview some of the most famous people in the world, some of the most infamous people in the world, some mayors that have gone to jail. <laughs> but he was a nice guy. <laughs> and I, I say that, <laughs> I say that just to say, but this story right here has gone all over the globe. It was front page in Australia. It was a front page story in Thailand. I got a call from Israel to do an interview, a radio interview with a translator. I was on BBC World America telling this story right here. I had no idea there had never been a story told with someone who has vitiligo from a patient's point of view. Even though one of the most famous people on the planet had it, Michael Jackson, had vitiligo. One of the treatments of vitiligo is to actually bleach your skin if you get it over 80% of your body. Yes, he had it. Yes, he bleached his skin. When I first got it, I got it on my left hand. So I used to wear a glove to do my reports. Hee hee hee. Come on! I understand his reclusiveness. I understand a lot about not talking about the disease. And I understand a lot of other things. I don't understand a lot about Michael Jackson, so let's leave it with what I understand, how difficult it can be living with a disease like that. But I say this to you because we all know what our strengths and weaknesses are, what you think your strength or what you think your weakness may be. We have some great minds in this room, some very innovative thinkers. I think that you might think your weakness is a weakness when it can actually be your strength. This story has made me nationally famous, internationally famous. Just being able to talk about something that was so difficult for me to live with has changed my life in leaps and bounds. I get to travel the country and share my story with audiences of different uh, ethnicities, of different ability or disabilities, of different uh, innovative thinking, uh, of different technologies. I, I share my story with people and hopefully inspire them to open up their mind and think of things differently because you should not judge a book by its cover. I know I have limited time, so I have one more thought that I'd, I'd like to share with you before I go. My final thought is, is I'm six foot two, you know, 190 pounds. I think I'm a man. <clears throat> and a lot of guys in my position wouldn't say this or admit it, but I'll say it. We need each other. It's true. There's not one thing that you do in your life that's solo. I, I used to say, when I'm in other parts of the country, how many people out here have actually made a car? And when I'm in Detroit, people actually raise their hand. <laughs> but when I'm in other parts of the country, no one raises their hand because we make it for them. You subtract money from the equation, and I don't know who stitched their clothes before they came in, but I had to get mine from someone else who made them. I don't know about the food in your refrigerator. I don't know if you have a garden in your backyard. Maybe you do, power to you. I don't. I had to actually get it from someone else who grew it. I believe that there are minds in this room that can change lives. I believe that by me speaking out about my illness, about uh, something that seems could be a weakness for me has turned into such a strength that there's going to be someone out there who's going to figure out how to fix it. There are things that we do in each and every aspect of our life. Your company, you are providing services for other people and subtract money from it. And the simple truth is, is we need each other, man. I mean, that's the truth. We need progressive thought. We need innovative thinkers. We need Ted, baby. <laughs> we need a different way of thinking sometimes. We need somebody to give you that kick in the shin and say, hey, wake up. This is it. I like to say this and give people a moment to recognize that this is life. You're living it right now. You're in my life. And right now, I'm in yours. Hopefully, my 15 minutes enhanced it. My name is Lee Thomas. I'm a broadcaster w, uh, from WJBK, Fox 2 in Detroit. My website is Turning White. The book is Turning White. And I have a mission, and that's to raise the level of positivity as I go around the country speaking. Thank you for your time.
I'll bathe in your applause. I'll bathe in it. <laughs> Thank you very much, you guys. I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Thank you.